In this video, we present the endovascular embolization of a large lumbar type A epidural arteriovenous fistula. The patient is a 54-year-old gentleman who presented with a subacute onset of progressive lower extremity weakness, loss of sphincter function, and sexual dysfunction. He has an interesting past medical history of previous surgery about 13-14 years ago. He underwent an L4-5 microdiscectomy. On examination, the patient presented on a wheelchair, unable to ambulate, with significant weakness of the lower extremities. He had a sensory loss in a non-dermatomal distribution, and his reflexes were diminished. This is an original MRI 14 years ago uh, after he underwent the microdiscectomy because there was a concern of infection. The patient didn't require another operation, but he was in long-term antibiotics. Other than the possible dyskitis, this MRI was essentially normal. This is the recent lumbar MRI when he originally presented to us. You can see the serpentine vessels around the nerve roots and catequina suggesting the presence of a fistula. Multiple axial views of the MRI demonstrate a really large epidural vein that is coming from the L4 and 5 foramen and is causing mass effect on, on the catequina. MRI of the thoracic spine show some more abnormal vessels on the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord and you can also observe uh, all the edema there is um, up to the mid thoracic portion of the spinal cord. Spinal epidural arteriovenous fistula have been previously classified in type A and type B. Type B subclassified in type B1 and type B2. Uh, classification is based on the in extra and intradural components and also mass effect from the extradural component. Our current case is a type A because there is a significant mass effect from a very large epidural vein, but also there is serpentine vessels intradurally. We then perform a complete spinal angiogram and the only abnormal connection was at the level of the right L4 radicular artery and you can observe very prominent artery with a uh, one single channel draining into the epidural large vein that ascends up to uh, mid thoracic levels. Under conscious sedation, we obtain arterial access. First, we try to get access into the fistula from the right femoral, but because the angle of, of the vessel, eh, we did a better job coming from the left femoral artery. So using a cobra catheter uh, and a microcatheter, we try to get access directly into the fistula with a microwire, as you can observe now. But we were not successful. Every time we advance the microcatheter, the microwire will come out of the fistula portion. We tried different wire sizes and also different shapes of the tip of the wire, but we were not successful. So we decide to maintain the tip of the microcatheter in the most distal portion of the arterial part of the fistula. We first uh, proceed with coiling the uh, end of the lumbar artery. By putting multiple coils, we create a cast. And this is uh, after several coils. This is the very last coils. Uh, before we inject onyx, we wanted to have a cast for the onyx to stay. Here is the final coil cast. 
and we were really careful of on maintaining the tip of the microcatheter with the distal on the arterial portion of the fistula. Then we proceed injecting onyx 18. Here you can see uh, for purpose of the video we uh, fast forward it but it's a very slow onyx injection and we are letting the onyx finding its way through the fistulous portion as you can see right now into the proximal portion of the venous side of the fistula. We then wait another 30 seconds before we proceed with a second injection of onyx material. Here you can see on the left side of the coil mass where, where the onyx is going. Technically speaking, this is probably a relatively easy endovascular procedure. Probably the hardest part of the case was to find the exact abnormal connection between artery and vein. Final angiogram demonstrates complete obliteration of the fistulous portion. You can see the lumbar artery abnormally enlarged, but there is no more uh, early draining vein and this fistula has been cured. And this is the final result. This fistula is probably a consequence of the previous lumbar microdiscectomy and infection. A MRI of the thoracic and lumbar spine after two months of the endovascular procedure you can observe complete resolution of the spinal cord edema and there is no more intradural vessels and the large abnormal vein is no longer there. Most importantly, the patient recovered all his function. He was able to ambulate and all the sphincter and sexual dysfunction have completely resolved. Thank you.